Hey guys, welcome back for this media conference with Harry Maguire. Um, just a reminder, this is embargoed until 6am tomorrow, Wednesday morning. Then we'll have another section at the end, embargoed till 10.30pm this evening. Um, Tim, do you want to get us underway? Hi Harry. Hi. A big week coming up. Obviously the friendly first, but the big picture, how important is it that you use and take full advantage of this week to secure qualification for the Euros next summer? Yeah, of course. We've um, put ourselves in a good position in the group. Um, it's never easy to qualify for major tournaments. Um, obviously, in recent years, we've done it really well and we've been really professional about it. And We've got another big game. Obviously, we've got the friendly first, which we're, we're focused on at the moment, but we, we know that the, the big game is Tuesday against Italy and it's important that we, we go there and try and get the win and, and get the qualification. You received some booze in the Scotland game. Gareth Southgate came out and, and spoke really well about it and a lot of the players defended you. Can you just put into words what it means to you when you hear that, how it makes you feel and the impact it has on, on you and those close to you? Um, obviously, I addressed it straight after the game, but um, playing for my country means absolutely everything to me. Um, I've proven that and over the years, the last six years or so since I've been playing. Um, I give everything on the pitch. But yeah, it's opposition fans. Um, so it's not something we can control. Um, but yeah, for myself, I, I, I'm, I'm an experienced player now. Um, and I know how to block it out and I know how to focus and concentrate and get through the games. Um, but obviously, it's a, it's, it's, it probably affects my, my family and my friends more than, than it actually affects my, myself, especially when I'm playing in the game. Um, I've had so many great nights and so many great memories playing for, for my country and, and playing for my club as well. So, no, it's, um, it's something you play football um, to create memories, um, not just for myself, but for my, for my family and friends. And obviously, the, the, the last year has been a little bit difficult for, for them to, to probably enjoy the games as they did in the previous uh, eight, nine years of my career. So, um, uh, I'm sure it'll change. Um, I'll keep working hard and, um, and keep fighting for my place and, um, and keep trying to put things right. The UK and Ireland have been announced today or confirmed today as the host for the Euros in 2028. You've been through a home Euros. Just how special is it? And might you still be playing on in that tournament if, uh, if it's hosted over here? Yeah, well... Um Hopefully I'll be in the squad, but either way, I'm sure I'll be at the at the tournament. I'll either be in the stands with my mates having a few pints, um, or in the squad um, helping the lads. But yeah, for sure I'll be supporting or, or playing either way. I'm a big fan of England, and um, to have a tournament in in this country, you know how the recent tournaments have gone in this country. Um, it brings the country united, um, and there's a real real buzz around the place. And I experienced it playing in the in the final at Wembley against Italy which obviously was disappointment disappointment in the end um, but yeah it was a it's a special place to be involved in when 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 the team's playing well and especially in our in our country hi Harry um, when Gareth picks you in the squad he always says how well you play for England why do you think that is where do you get that confidence from when you come away to play for your country yeah I think the the manager brings great belief um, gives me great confidence to go out and play, but I get the confidence through experience and um, nearly 60 caps for my country, been to three major tournaments, played in arguably the most consistent, successful England side over the, la over the last five, six years we have been. Um, so, yeah, I, I get the confidence um, through the experiences that I've been through. And obviously, I, I believe... That the man, well, I know the manager showing great trust and faith in me, and he gives me the confidence and belief. But also the my teammates and and the players around me, um, I feel like I'm really important to them and to the team, uh, and I've got to keep proving that. Well, you just listed that you've got some massive achievements for the for the England national team. Do you feel you get credit for what you've achieved play, playing for England? Listen, I don't want to be sat here and getting a pat on the back. I've had some huge plaudits over the years playing for my country. Um, yeah, probably the last year or so hasn't, hasn't been like that, but the previous five, I was um, getting loads and loads of credit. So that's football, that's the way it works. Um, a career, you don't just keep 
um, playing at the top and, and not get no criticism. That doesn't happen unless you're um, the best in the world, and that's probably Ronaldo and Messi, even though they still get criticised as well. So, um, no, it's, it's expected. Look, it's a, it's a career of ups and downs um, with, the, with the way the game's going, and especially for defenders and, and goalkeepers nowadays. And every goal that you conceded is analysed. Um, yeah, it can be tough at moments, um, but you've got, you've got to stay resilient and, and you know that the, the next game's only around the corner and you've got to prove yourself again. Can I just ask you about the, the last year? You, you said it's been tough and, and Gareth said after the Scotland game, kind of the, the talk around you has probably been built into something he's never, never seen before. Do you feel that yourself? Um, I try and stay away from it all. Obviously, um, you can't stay away from it as your, as your family and your friends are, are probably seeing things and, and reading things. They probably read a lot more than I do, for sure. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of talk um, ab about me over the, over the last year. But um, to, for that talk to happen, you've got to build your way up to, 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 to be a, a top performer like I have done over the previous five years to that. Um, and things haven't gone to plan over the last year or so. Um, but I'm sure they'll get back on track. And like I said, a career is a, it's a long path and um, many ups, many downs. Um, it's probably been a little bit of a blip and um, I'm trying to get back to where I was. Thanks. Thanks. Kerry. Yeah, let's go. Harry, um, emotional scenes at the end of the match against Burnley. Um, so Alex Ferguson has contributed so much to Manchester United. It's hard to ever repay him. So how special was it to get that win in Fergie time with Kathy Sadi passing? Yeah, it was um, obviously nothing can put, um, can make him happy at the moment. I know he's probably going through a really sad time and for, for all the family. So only what we can do is respect and everyone at the club, um, all the players, um, they're all thinking about him and his family. Um, it's a sad time for him. We know that. And if we put a tiny little bit of a smile on his face at the end, we're scoring in that last minute. Um, we're really happy about that. But yeah, of course, it's a really, uh, really sad time for, for him and his family at the moment. So our thoughts are, are right with him. It was a lovely assist from McTominay. Really, really, really sweet. Uh, a lot of the responses from Manchester United fans, immense, colossal for your performances. And sorry, what's the last word like to you? Yeah, listen, it's like I've said, it's, uh, it's a football career of many ups and many downs. And... Um, like I say, hopefully I go on and uh, and perform really, really well for the club and country. Um, and I'm getting all the plaudits again, but I'm I'm pretty sure that that's the way it's not going to go. There's going to be times where um, I'm going to receive criticism from now to the end of my career. That that that's football, and uh, it's how you deal with it. It's how you bounce back, and um, all you can do is work as hard as you can. Um, and every day you've got to keep proving that you you, you deserve to be at the level. Did Ten Hag say anything to you at the end as you went into the international break? No, he just said really well done, really well played um, in the dressing room at the end to me. So, no, it was pleased. I was pleased just to help the lads. I know it's been a difficult start to the season at this club. Um, the spotlight's always on you, and um, when you when you don't win football matches, uh, the 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 pressure piles on. And um, it was really important with the break coming up, and we know. Um, how important the result is before the international break and how it can bring the feeling towards towards the club. Um, it was really important that we got the win. I know we left it a little bit late, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really important for, for us as a group of players um, to get that victory. Boyhood Man United fan, big Beckham fan. Have you watched the documentary? Yeah, I've watched it. Um, yeah, I think obviously you, you, a lot of people are speaking about me at the moment, but obviously uh, to, to see how what he went through um, and the resilience that he's shown. And um, yeah, he's, he's been a big role model of mine ever since growing up in the playground. Uh, whenever I took a shot or a free kick, I was always David Beckham. Um, but yeah, he's a, it's, it's, it's a great watch and um, uh, yeah, one that I really enjoyed, but also one that he really inspired me on. Would you like to have a conversation with him about that, about how he got through it? Yeah, well, I, I, I've, I, I actually spoke with David um, about three weeks ago after the Scotland game he got in touch with me so it was really nice of him and I, I really appreciated that and I think a lot of people England fans certainly were 
worried over the summer that you were staying with Man United and may not get the match minutes that they'd like you to see. How much was that decision, the boyhood fan and the player, how much do you believe you still want to win everything with United? And can you see that happening? Well, ever since I joined Manchester United, only what I wanted is to, for the club to grow and to, for the club to get back out how it should be and be successful. So I've had three and a half years as captain. I've been there. This is my fifth season. Um, and ever since I stepped through the door, I wanted the club to be, be a success. And that's even in the last year, in our, uh, last year or so when I haven't been playing as much as I'd have liked. Um, but of course, I want to play minutes. I want to play football. That's why I play the game. Um, and hopefully, um, I can I can start to, to, to get the minutes and um, and continue my career at, at Manchester United. It's World Mental Health Week. I couldn't think of a better time for you to be able to give us some of that advice that Beckham gave you after the Scotland game. Yeah, I think obviously it's it's not just me. Look, I don't want all the spotlight on me about World Mental Health because. Everybody, whether you're a footballer or not, you, you have challenges every every day. And um, like I said, we're in the we're in the spotlight, but every day people wake up with, with mental health and whether it's going to, to their own job, which could be anything. And um, yeah, it's tough. It's it's about speaking out, um, getting support and, uh, and and speaking to your loved ones really. And uh, I'm lucky that I have great family and great friends around me. Is that what David said? Go to your family. Can you give us? I don't want to take a personal conversation away from us, but is there anything you can reveal? No, listen. I think you, you if you watch the the documentary, David ex explains a lot of how we dealt with it, and um, I'm not going to go into a personal conversation. I must say. Obviously, Please, uh, Pablo. Next. Um, just bringing it back to um, 2028. I think a lot has been made of the fact that with five host nations. England, you know, won't be guaranteed automatic qualification. Is that a bit of a, a daunting prospect, the fact that you, you will have to qualify for your own home tournament? Yeah, like I said, qualify, qualifying for a major tournament is tough. Um, but also, I think you've got to look at it on the, on the positive side. If we don't qualify for the major tournament, we're not really there and ready to compete to win the tournament. Um, Fifth Nation now has been successful over a 10 year period that we now got to start looking at winning winning these tournaments. And um, if we can't get out of the group of qualifying, we, we don't deserve to be there. Um, but yeah, of course, it, it'd be a nightmare scenario. Um, but on the other hand, we've got to play with great belief and great confidence that we can get out of the group and qualify. Um, and that's what we'll be looking to do. But of course, my eyes aren't really on the on the 28 at the moment. We've got a, a big Euros coming up next summer, and, and one that we're looking forward to. Obviously, 2028 is a is a long way away, and there there will be players involved in that tournament that we haven't heard of or seen, but but you might have, you know, in in Manchester United or in England. When you look at the youth talent coming up, are you encouraged by what you see? Yeah, it's incredible. I think. Um, I think the squad that we've got now has got a lot of senior players who's been through a lot for, for the country and, and been to two, three, four major tournaments. Um, but also we've got some amazing talent and I think everyone everyone knows that who watches the Premier League week in, week out or even watches La Liga now, now Jude's over there. Um, but yeah, it's um, we've got some young players coming through. Um, but young players who actually have played a, a lot of minutes and a lot of experience in big games. So... I'm sure come 2028, we'll have a, whether I'm in it or not, we'll have a, an amazing squad to, to, to go and compete in the tournament. A lot's also been made on about how players coming up now are, are different to when they, sort of say, 10, 15 years ago. Are you still seeing changes in the way players are developing now? Yeah, yeah, you, you can say that, but I think the, the thing with football is that football develops every three, four years, um, maybe even less now, the, the game just develops and changes in ways in terms of formations and styles and and what players are asked to do. Um, and I think that will develop again in the next four years, come 2028, whenever um, it, it is the Euros in, in our country. So, yeah, I think football has developed, but I think also football in general is just develops and, and keeps progressing and... Um, 
different styles and formations and things. So I think footballers need to go with it. Otherwise, they'll not have a career. Thanks, Pablo. Fine. Hi, Harry. Nice Hi. to see you. Um, just going back to that David Beckham conversation, I know you don't want to divulge um, what, what was spoken about, but firstly, how did the call come about? And secondly, how much did what he said to you actually help you? No, it meant everything. Um, I've spoke about uh, throughout my career that David Beckham is someone who I, I looked up to and I watched when I was a young boy. Um, unfortunately, I didn't end up on the right wing and, and, and scoring and assisting as many goals as he has. Um, but yeah, he was a big role model when I was um, growing up. And um, no, I think it just shows how classy he is um, to reach out to me and um, and to, to message me. And no, it was it's something that I really appreciate. And um, yeah, it was touching, really. Yeah, it, it, there was no social media when he was there. And I've watched the, the, the documentary and, and the reminder of it. It was actually quite horrific what, what he suffered. And the past year for you has been, been really difficult to, I'm sure, for your family and friends, as you said, to, uh, to watch. But what was he able to say to you in terms of your resilience or, or make you feel, you know, how... Res what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, how did he fill you with confidence that you're being resilient in this moment? Yeah, like I said, I don't want to go too much into the conversation, but the main, uh, what he did is he, he reminded me of the career that I've had today and the big moments that I've had in my career. And uh, I think, like I say, you, when you're going through tough moments, you've got to think on past experiences and, and past memories and, and where you've gone in your career and what you've been through. Um, and every career, like I say, every career is so up and, up and down, and especially when you reach uh, what I've reached in, in terms of being the captain of the... The, the biggest club in the world for three and a half years. Um, and he's been in that position and he, know, he knows what it's like. And obviously I watched the, the documentary and I couldn't believe how much he went through at the time. Um, so yeah, I know in the documentary, Gary Neville speaks a lot about how resilient he is and as a person. And you know, I think he's been a, a huge role model for, for many footballers growing up, especially in my era. Just one last question. It's on Mark Gay. He speaks so highly of you and, and John Stones and, and talks about the incredible partnership that you both have. Um, obviously, with John out injured in the last camp, he was given an opportunity. He's clearly England's future going, going forward. What qualities does he, does he have that, that you can see in him as a young player coming up? Yeah, listen, Mark has is, is, is done amazing. I think he left Chelsea at an amazing time when he needed to go and play football. Um, I think you, you think of Mark and you watch him play and he doesn't look like a young boy playing football. He's, he's, he's experienced, he's the captain of Crystal Palace um, and he plays with great experience for, for, for a young young lad who's going to have, a, a, I'm sure, a, a long career in the game. Um, he's got all the attributes he needs to, to, to be a success as a centre-back. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased for him in the last uh, couple of games. He performed brilliantly away at Ukraine in a in an hostile environment um, and then obviously the friendly in the first half um, against Scotland unfortunately had to come off um, but yeah I'm sure there's gonna be many more games and many more opportunities for him and I think yeah the biggest thing I can say about him is that he's, he's such a young boy with um, with playing with so much maturity. Thanks Harry. Thanks Faye. We'll finish this section with me and Dennis. Harry? Just on the front row here. You've talked a lot about the the resilience that you've shown and the criticism that you've faced the flip side to that, of course, is at Hamden. There were 3,000 England supporters who never stopped singing your name. I remember being in Gimaraish in 2019 when we were singing your chant, the England supporters. So therefore, how much are you looking forward to playing two games at Wembley with the backing that the England fans have given you? Yeah, I've, I've spoke about the England fans ever since I made my debut. Um, Lithuania, six years ago, I think it was, maybe more. Um, they've been amazing with me. Um, unbelievable, uh, the support, the faith. People always ask me, how do I get the confidence and the belief to go out and play and, and do what I do? Um, and yeah, the England fans were a big part of that. They, um, when the, t the times have been tough um, over the last year, they've gave me that support. They've gave me um, that confidence that I deserve to be playing. And um, I can't thank them enough. Um, and one day I'm sure I'll be in that stand with them singing along with them. Do you subscribe to the theory that if you feel right mentally, you're a different player on the pitch? Because I've seen that mentioned today with it being World Mental Health Day. 
Yeah, of course. I think football's um, a real intense sport. And um, like I say, the spotlight's on everyone at the moment with the media and the social media. Um, and mental part of the game is probably is probably more important than the physical and the technical part of the game at the moment. You've got to make sure that you're mentally ready for, for what's to come. Um, and the main thing is obviously keep, uh, dealing with the highs and the lows of, of the sport. And finally, you had the opportunity to go to West Ham to play regular football. The fact that you didn't do that, what was your thought process and the impact that potentially it could have on your place in the England squad in the summer? Regular game time. Yeah, of course. Um, regular game time is, is really important to me. Um, it has been throughout all my career. Um, the actual opportunity to, to go to West Ham was... It wasn't agreed, really, between the both clubs and myself. Um, so it wasn't just my my chance to say yes and I'm going. Um, it wasn't agreed between both clubs. So... Um, the actual opportunity wasn't there because we didn't get far, far enough down the line with it. Um, but West Ham's a massive club. Um, but like I said, my fully focus is still on Manchester United. Um, I want to fight for my place. But of course, game time is really important to me. Sorry, there is one more in this section. Thank you, Patrick. Hi, Harry. Uh, you said at the top it was more difficult for your family and friends to enjoy matches over the last year or so. I mean, How does that make you feel? And, and have they kind of considered even staying away from matches or kind of changing their habits during your sort of difficult spell? Yeah, obviously, like I've said, you play football uh, for memories, for good times, for myself, but also for my family and my friends and the, the tournaments that they've been to and um, you'll probably speak to them and you'll, they'll say it's the best times of, they've had and the best times of their life. And obviously the, the last year has been a bit, bit tougher for them. Um, yeah, I'd say there's there's been times where um, they 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 probably haven't been to as many games as they they did previously, um, especially especially the away games. Um, but I'm I'm sure over my career um, they've had amazing times and they'll speak really highly of it. And I'm sure in the future um, I've still got many more years left. Um, they'll have some amazing times as well.